Gleave Dolan, aka Gleave D. Welcome to All in the Line with DJ Insider. How are you, sir? Thanks for having me. Uh, it's an absolute pleasure, especially a pleasure for me because, um, yeah, one of my biggest uh, heroes right in front of me now. <laughs> <laughs> what a compliment, man! Well, man, it's, it's true, and that, that's that's what I want to talk first about. It's um, you're definitely one of my first musically influence influences, and we want to find out a bit about your background, Gleave, and where your first influences came from. Right. Um, oh well, this is a <laughs> a long, long, long story. Um, probably um, as I was kind of growing up. I kind of took influences from, from everywhere, really. Um, like, my mum and dad would have been playing Stevie Wonder in the house, you know, from I was no age, like. And my bro, he, uh, he was actually, he's 11 years older than me, so he's out DJing, playing sunk, uh, funk and soul. Yeah. And um, I kind of got into that. And then um, probably once I hit secondary school, it was all about hip-hop, electro, uh, used to buy all the Street Signs albums before I was even DJing uh, and try and scratch on, on my dad's kind of old-fashioned turntable. Broke I don't know how many needles like, but uh, <laughs> yeah, so it kind of progressed from that um, into the kind of big hip-hop scene like yes. in, in the 80s uh, and where all my kind of mates at school were into Iron Maiden and ACDC. I was the kind of nerdy freak that was into this new hip hop thing. You know, guy from Lauren that was into hip hop. It was a weird kind of thing. Um, and then from the hip hop thing, the whole kind of turntableism, kind of DJ and scratch and beat juggling kind of thing kind of took off. And that's where I kind of really kind of found my kind of place with it, if you know what I mean. I started off as, as an old school hip hop DJ. Playing loads of Def Jam records and two copies of everything and marking all the kind of tracks for, you know, kind of the beat juggling and, and scratching and stuff. So, yeah, that that's my early, early influences um, before the kind of the rave thing kind of kicked off where I kind of started finding out about Cloud Cox and yes. Sasha and Nipper and John De Silva and, and kind of stuff like that, you know. So uh, that was kind of hip hop. Yeah, Funk and soul, hip hop, and that was the kind of bridging gap then that kind of got me into the kind of early early rave scene. So the er, like the early rave scene then, like you were going way back to you know some of the so give us some of the clubs that you might have played in at the beginning. Ah uh, well, I I was I was lucky enough. I was lucky enough um, because I was kind of a hip hop DJ. The scene kind of here, it was kind of like uh, a mix between. You might have been going to clubs like the Helmsman and Bangor, where Robbie would have done on a, on a Monday night, and that that was predominantly a, a soul kind of rare groove kind of hip hop kind of night. That kind of almost changed in like the the late eighties. I shouldn't have been in the clubs; like I was way <laughs> too young. Like, um, but it kind of you had like I, you know, you had hip hop guys go on and girls and kind of people was in the soul funk, and then you had this whole big rush of Italian style kind of piano music that kind of was coming in and you had a whole mixed bag of everyone. Plus you also had the indie kids that were in the kind of Stone Roses and, and the Mondays and Primal Scream and you know it was a whole mix of everyone and nobody really knew what way it was going. I suppose we were all kind of naive and a bit wet behind the ears you know um, but the kind of the piano rave thing kind of really did take off you know with the whole kind of that whole Ibiza thing at the end of the 80s and like the Hacienda and kind of even here in Belfast the art college that I was kind of lucky enough to get the play in I got the play in I didn't get <laughs> unfortunately I didn't get the play at Homer McCready's Sugar Sweet but <laughs> got the play at a night, a night called Lego uh, and that was kind of one of my first gigs along with like the Ulster Hall and stuff which was like early 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 90s like you know 1990. So when when did Kilwater House come into this then? Oh, Kilwater was it was well down the line. Yeah. It was uh, it would have been ninety four, I think it would have been. Um, but before the whole Kilwater thing, it was kind of circus. Oh yes, yeah, circus tells me that. Yeah, well, what once I kind of won the the DMCs here in Northern Ireland, um, and I kind of I went to to, to do the the British finals. Yes. Obviously, I didn't. I didn't cut it in the British finals because it was like it was predominantly 
hip hop, like full on turntablism. And I was kind of playing a bit of hip hop and a bit yeah. of rave and a bit of soul and a bit of everything. Uh, so I kind of, once I kind of seen that um, and come home, the work just started flooding in. And I got offered this job in Circus Circus, Northern Ireland's first all nighter. Um, and it, it was something else. Like I was, I was only a kid. She, shouldn't have yeah. been there. Like still at school, um, couldn't drive, had to get a lift to it every week. And that was just unbelievable. It, it was, it was life changing pretty much. It was full rave scene. Northern Ireland's first all nighter. You'd, you know, what, once the clubs all finished in Northern Ireland, you had just people flocking from all over the country, even from down south to come to this all nighter. And that was probably, the first place that I played with one of my big kind of first idols, which was Carl Cox. I got to warm up for him. Oh, and nice. that was just, it was just mega, mega, just unbelievable. You know, you had people like Sasha, Nipper, yeah. just Dream Frequency, Sunscreen playing live. And it was just, it was just awesome. It so was just. <laughs> would you say that Circus would be responsible for really getting the rave scene going then? Like in. Yeah, well, it, it was it was Northern Ireland's first all nighter. You know, there was loads of stuff going on before that, like you know, warehouse parties, loads of stuff going on in Belfast at the Art College and at Queens and and the snack bar and stuff. Uh, but Circus really did kind of kick it in for the masses, as well as Kelly's. You know, yeah, like Kelly. Yeah, you, you had people like I, I can remember going to Kelly's in in the early nineties before Chris Hurley had even started doing it, and I remember going to hear the James Brown tribute band in it like you know it's just like a big barn and then all of a sudden the kind of rave thing started creeping in so you had you had stuff going on in kelly's and you had stuff going on in belfast and obviously Derry was kind of catching up on that thing with with the point as well which was which, which was unbelievable it used to run the friday um and you had you just had to go down over the border to it but um yeah those times were just it was crazy because because nobody knew how long it was going to last really yeah. And t for us to be sitting here in 2016, you know, know. talking about this and, and the, the scene still to be vibrant and, and going the way it is, it, it's, it's unbelievable. Yeah, it's an exciting I, place. I, I, I never want it to end, man. Well, I, I just don't, don't want to go up. I want to get that, some of that Peter Pan juice in well, me like, and just stay young forever. Well, uh, you seem to have it, mate, because you've, you've been there from the beginning and you've went through you know, the hip-hop and then you've went into, you've played you know, th some other genres like trance and now you play a lot of house too. So you know, where does it go next for you? Well, the house thing has always been in me. You know, um, probably because I've been resident at, at Thompson's in Belfast yes. for so long, you know, they've just celebrated 20 years and I've kind of been involved with the club from the start. Um, but more on a regular basis, probably in the last 15, 16 years as a resident. Um, so it's always kind of kept me in my house roots, if you know what I mean. Um, and I, as you said there, I kind of veered off into the kind of trance land doing yeah. the coast to coast stuff with a guy called Phil Johnson. Yeah. We had a couple of big hits called Home and stuff that done really, really well around the world. Um, but I kind of just found myself in that trance thing. It wasn't, it wasn't me. I was doing yeah. it, but it, it wasn't, it wasn't in my soul. You know what yeah. I mean? It was like I'm a househead. Always have been a househead, and always will be. Um, so. I kind of ventured into kind of different genres because I've been in it so long. If, if I kept doing the same thing all the time, you just go stale, man. You, you have to keep reinventing yourself in some sort of way. So um, probably that brings us to the tedious link of... Uh, yes, what we've been looking for. You know, it's, uh, it's been said there's a, an alias called Jonas Blake now. Well, <laughs> well, this is the first time I've openly kind of know, spoke about it. It's good or, to, to, to clear this up. Yeah, it's kind of been a pro project that I've kind of been bubbling away um, for a wee while now in the background. I haven't told anybody, I haven't kind of related to myself at all. Um, kind of put a pair of glasses on in disguise. Don't think it really works, but um, <laughs> <laughs> around Belfast. But uh, it, it's a project that I kind of wanted to start basically... I kind of was speaking to one of my old uh, managers that used to look after me, and, and he basically said, you know, if a promoter Googles my name now, there's, there's an array of stuff that comes up from 
early DMC stuff, the rave stuff, the trance, the tech trance, the right across the old school, right, right across the board. And he says, it, it's just kind of hard to buy into it. You know, it, 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 it's, it's hard for a punter to buy into because there's so much and there's so many different varied musics and genres because I've come through so many decades of dance music. Um, I kind of thought I would just like start from the beginning again. And the whole, the whole beauty about it was start from the beginning as Jonas Blake and nobody knowing it was me. It was nice f- for people to log on to my social media and like the stuff or yeah. like, cause, cause nobody knew it was me. I, I knew, I knew deep down that they weren't just liking it because the fan base it, was, it, it, was, it was Glee or Glee yes. Day, whatever. They were actually liking it for, for the, the product. Music, for the music, mate, yes. You know, and, and that to me, that was special because I was able to get likes and, and comments and shares on my tracks and all my remixes without them knowing it was me. So it was a kind of like sneaky project that I just kind of wanted to float out to see, you know, how far I could actually get it without me owning up it was me and people fa- you know favor favoritism because of stuff yeah, I've done in the past basically yeah so it's uh it's been going pretty well so yeah. it has well I've seen you've yeah. done it you've done a few shows you said you mentioned there you've have your your weekly residency in Thompson's and you, you've done a few Saturday nights there and you're you're doing a few releases also how much energy yeah. are you putting into the product and um, and where is it going for you now well I kind of slowed up on doing um Productions under my own name over the over the last while because I've just kind of been putting everything into the kind of Jonas Blake thing. So I've just recently finished uh, a remix for a Belfast label, JK's Belfast label, The Funk, uh, which is Conor McGavick and Jay's Smile track. I've kind of done a, like a, a 2016 re re edit uh, for it that I've just played out at the weekend. That sounds smashing like so. Brilliant. Um, I have I've just been working, looking for loads of ideas in. Uh, the record vault out the back that you were introduced to whenever you were last home here. Yes. Um, and uh, just smashing stuff away on, on machine out there and in Ableton and just trying to get ideas up and, and get things rolling, you know? So um, loads, of, loads of ideas. Yeah. Just need to get them over the finishing line now. You know, that's the hard part. Right, mate. Well, I look forward to hear them. And, and you also, you're also part of the Belfast Underground show now. Is that right? Yeah, I've got a I've got a monthly show on that, um, uh, which is it's a really it's a really great idea and, and concept. There's loads of loads of Northern Ireland DJs has got on board with this. Um, they kind of put it out. It's like doing a radio show, but you're you're under full pressure because it's full it's camera up. The cameras so are on. It's live. Cameras <laughs> are on. You know, if you make a mistake. You make a mistake. There's no hiding. There's no editing. It's live. It's on the table, and it's unbelievable the amount of people around the world that are logging in and listening to it. And you know, you can go on and listen to the shows again. It's a fantastic concept. Really, really great, and and uh, fabulous to be on board with it. Brilliant. Well, the DJ, the producer, and the radio host, mate. You've also <laughs> involved with uh, DJ workshops. Is that right? Yeah, I uh, I run a kind of a, a wee company called IDJ, and basically uh, I do loads of school stuff, right? That's kind of, uh, you know, through the week. They can now do it as a qualification in school, um, and I kind of rock in with seven sets of CDJs and, and put a, set it all up, do the workshop, go through the different music genres that they want to hear, um, and, you know, we cover all, all music genres, whatever the student wants to kind of wants to do i kind of show them how to piece the whole mix together record it up for them send on their merry way and um funny thing last night i was just sitting on my facebook scrolling through it and there's a big cream event coming up here in belfast and one of my past students has just been announced on it so so to see a progression of somebody coming through my class i'd never dj'd before and me helping them along their way on their journey and now you're getting billed on a cream event. That's, you know. Well, no surprise, mate. There could be no better mentor. <laughs> Happy days. Well, mate, uh, let's go back to some of the fun things here about some of your gigs. What's, your, what's been your most memorable gig? Because you've had quite a few, mate. Most memorable gig would probably be uh, Ibiza, I would say. Um, yes. One, uh, really one weekend, uh, I, was, I got, the, got the playing privilege. And uh, it, 
luckily for us, um, the Friday night, I don't think really one were, were running anything, but everybody was on the island. So um, it was just kind of jam-packed. And I remember standing in the DJ box, whenever the DJ box was in the middle of the swimming pool, and just kind of looking out around that kind of, it was a club, but it's like an aircraft hangar. And I don't know how many thousand, it could have been 8,000 people in it. And just the place was completely going off. So probably, I've, got, I've got a right few gigs, man. <laughs> we could probably I know talk we could sit here all for, night. for a good hour. Um, well, yeah, that's... So that's probably one of the most memorable ones where I've just stood and went, wow, this is just like, this is awesome. Can you give us some uh, some stories, mate, of some of the maddest shit you've ever seen? Because I know you've seen a fair bit. <laughs> even, even if it, after parties include it whatever like <laughs> oh man oh, <laughs> here Jesus. we go you'll be here for another night yeah no but there's probably a lot I can't actually say online no, I'm, I'm kind of <laughs> kind of trying to get something here like because I know people are going to be watching going hold on a minute this is way too clean this is clean here <laughs> um, maybe, oh, maybe, maybe, maybe we need Mark here just to, to fill in a few areas here yeah he could probably he could probably <laughs> tell you a few too I remember being at Planet Love one year and there was a there was like there was like this kind of this is a stranger right right the, at the VIP room, there was like, um, it was like an elephant, like a big massive elephant, right? Like statue. <laughs> so we carried the we carried the elephant into the middle of the, the house tent, and DJ Snake was playing, and we in the middle of a dance floor, and we just our mark was up on top of the elephant, and <laughs> Ungawa, Ungawa, like Tarzan. <laughs> Unbelievable. Like. No, there's um, there's uh, there's probably a lot that I can't, actually can't say online, or I might get a rap at the door by the by the police. <laughs> All right, mate. Well, no problem. So tell us this, then, Glebe. Who do you think's killing it right now? Producers, DJs. Oh man, there's so much. There's so much good music about at the minute. You know, you've you've stuff like you know another Mando, Man Without a Clue, Matt Joe, Frankie Rosardo. I, you know, that, this stuff's awesome. Like, it's just, it, it's going almost going back to its roots. Proper house music, yeah. proper bass lines, nice vocals. You know, you've Purple Disco Machine, you've loads of stuff, lo piles, almost too much, you know, but it's great that it's just, it's full quality. Because um, it, it kind of went through a process of a while where everybody was just kind of making tunes on Ableton, sticking them out, and blah, blah, blah. But, you know, I think the quality's really shining through now. Plus, Coming from Belfast, you know, you have the Smuts guys, you have Wee Jordan killing it at the minute, you have a Jekka, you have Timmy Stewart and his extended play label. You know, it's it's endless. It's it's fantastic. And I, I personally think the music's getting better and better. That's brilliant to hear. It really is. It's, it's awesome. I think we're in a great place. Big time. Big time. Okay, mate, well, let's finish up with what's happening for Glaive, Jonas Blake right now. Have you got anything coming out that we can look out forward for or any big gigs? Yeah, well, the, the smile track that I was talking about earlier yes. on there uh, yeah. on Defunct. Um, I've got a new track called Losing You that uh, is in the process of, of getting signed. Um, I've also got a couple of bootlegs that are going to be floating about. I'm going to be f um, sharing them out on social media um, just for for likes and just to, to spread the Jonas Blake word. Um, continuing on with my residency at Stereo, uh, in Thompson's with the Jonas Blake stuff and also I'm for Ibiza twice this summer so I'm kind of working on some Jonas Blake stuff for that as well. Um, under uh, the Glaive thing it's would you believe it but it's 10 years since uh, Fire Devil so I, I thought it was um, it was about time to kind of step back up to the plate and and see what else we can kind of get out of it. The, you know the, you've <laughs> I've seen online, uh, which is the funny thing, there's like the Smuts guys have been playing it at Shine and Jordan's been dropping it and, and you know, obviously pitched down a lot yeah. slower. Um, but then I, I see like trans guys like Mark Sherry and Brian Kearney dropping it and clubs and places going off. And, you know, I just kind of went, uh, I think it's I think it's about time maybe uh, I kind of... Yes, give it some more fire, mate. Read on it, yeah, and fired it up again, you know, and uh, see what we're going to do. So that's that's a project that I've actually started. Um, so it should be dropping this summer at some stage, I think. 
Happy days, mate. We'll look forward to it and uh, we'll leave it at that. Thanks again for coming on the line, Gleave, with DJ Insider. And thanks for being such a legend and an inspiration. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me and keep up the good work over there, man. Okay, mate. Peace out. Cheers. Cheers, bro.